Welcome back, everybody. This is Derek Kirby from the Dallas Prospect, back with another Mavs. Mm, Mavs Diddy? 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 I really got to figure out how to start these videos again. Welcome back, guys. This is Derek Kirby from the Dallas Prospect, and we are back for another Mavs live stream here. I'm not actually live streaming this. Got a meeting in 30 minutes. Can't get tied up in a live stream. What's up, guys? This is Derek Kirby from the Dallas Prospect, and we have another Mavericks video for you today. Now, if you saw yesterday's quick little Mavs Minute, that's not a standard thing. That's just something that when life is extra crazy like it is right now, I'm going to have to release those every now and then. It's almost more like just a, a quick rapid fire reaction to whatever has just occurred, be it a, a trade speculation thing, an actual deal, a player injured, I don't know, maybe one of the better wins of the year. That seems like a fair one. But in this previous case, we were talking about the Mavericks going to Denver and beating the Nuggets. But more than just beating the Nuggets, which by the way, feels a little bit like poetic justice because if you think about when this team first looked like it was ready to break through this year and then suffered what ended up being a horrible setback, it was after they won in Denver earlier this year. I think it was like the 10th or 11th game of the year. And you had players stranded there for 11 days, just stuck in the hotel room. This was Josh Richardson, Dorian Finney-Smith. Maxi Kleba played another game against Orlando, but then got yanked. Uh, who else was it there? Uh, Dwight Powell missed time as well, but you had several key players out after that Denver game. So we got a flash of like, ooh, that was a really good overtime win early in the year. This team looks like they're putting it together. And then it was kind of rug pulled out from under them. Took weeks to recover, literal weeks to recover. They finally got it back together and then they returned the other night back to the place where they're Fortune had once seemed bright only to take a dark turn, and they turn the corner. They not only score another double-digit quality win, but well, I say another as if the first one was. They score a double-digit win. They really separated themselves from a good Denver team. What I like about this, and I talked a little bit about it in the Mavs Minute yesterday, there might be some similar rehashing going on here, but I know not all of you watched that one or you jumped on there just to see what the hell DDP was doing, but it's fine. The point is that the Mavericks won the season series going to Denver, winning again. Nobody was stranded there. You had, like, after the game, Josh Richardson joking on Twitter, like, the best part about this is I get to actually go home tomorrow. Like, I get to fly back with the team. I'm not stuck in that damn hotel room anymore. That's great. I can definitely understand that feeling. I would be going stir crazy as well. Almost like a little bit of PTSD probably if they checked into the same hotel. He's like, what room do I have? Oh, no. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. Uh, DDP? Hello? I still get paid, right? That got, that got a little extra. Regardless, the Mavericks get the victory. They start out in a hole, down 10 nothing. KP, though, has a very strong first quarter, gets a couple blocks, gets, I think, 11 points at least uh, going there early on, hitting on all cylinders. Now, he ends up with 25 for the game, so you look at it and you're like, hey, man, you started really strong. 25's kind of ho-hum. But his extended range in this game was phenomenal. Five of seven from three, hitting logo threes. 32-footer, shit, might as well have been 43-footer. I, I didn't just add 10, I added 11, because you see, I like to go one step beyond. But the point being, KP was great in this game. It was another flash, another flicker, a glimmer of hope of Bubble KP returning. And he's making a better impact again. He wins the defensive player of the game, championship belt, whatever. He wins that belt for his effort, not just the blocks, 
but he played really well as well when they tried to isolate him, they being Denver, tried to isolate him, and he had to help out on Murray or Porter Jr. Like, situations he's not been good in this year. And he did admirably in key moments in those situations. So, defensive player of the game. Makes sense. Also, you have another 20-point game, second consecutive, for uh, Josh Richardson. He's been quietly turning things around, even though I was a little bit late to the party to uh, to kind of not write him off, but just to say, like, I don't know that this is it for me for, like, my third guy. And I still don't know that for sure, but he has quietly been turning a corner here. Let me see here. This is... So where, where this game, before I get into that, well, no, I, I already brought up Richardson, so I'm going to bounce back here anyway. Um, Chuck Cooperstein points out on Twitter after the game, he says, I know people pine for the shooting of Curry, that being Seth Curry, but I hope people are warming up to the play of Josh Richardson. He's been terrific the last six weeks since getting his strength back from COVID. Big shooting night tonight, some excellent defense against Murray. Dalton Trigg goes one step further. See, I said Dalton Miller the other day, and I was like, that's not right. I had the right first name. Wrong team. We're not. We're talking Mavericks here, not Cowboys. That's Dalton Miller. But uh, Dalton Trigg points out on Twitter, the five previous games now for Richardson have been 17.2 points per game, 3.8 assists, three rebounds on 48.3% from the field, 37.9% from three, and 89.5% at the charity stripe. That's pretty good i like that that's solid production there from him he has been quietly you know turning a corner as he's shock of all shocks had time to work his way back not only into the flow of the offense and build chemistry with the team but worked his way back from a debilitating illness wow it's like we should have maybe been a little more patient ddp oh that's me sorry anyway in this game where the Mavericks really flipped the script, I said earlier they started down 10 nothing. They end up with a 13-point win, but it was the second quarter where they flipped the game on its head, as Kevin Gray Jr. points out on Twitter. The Mavericks shot 60% in the second quarter. They held the Nuggets to 35% in that same frame, allowing them to outscore the home team 34-22. to As a result, the Mavericks took an 11-point lead, 62-51 to at the half. That is, that is an impressive turnaround after such a slow, sluggish start, dropping down 10 nothing in the blink of an eye. So I'm very encouraged by this team's flashes. What I want to see now, and you can argue we're already seeing it, because now we've won, what, 11 out of 14? And I can, we can talk all we want about that Oklahoma City loss the other night. I damn well sure know that I'm pissed about that Oklahoma City loss the other night because we didn't play Luka or KP, and what the hell did we think was going to happen? I warned against sitting one of them, and they sat them both. You crazy mad lads actually did it. You deserve the loss for that. Not, nothing else to say. You deserve that loss. But regardless, the team has been vastly improved pretty much ever since... ESPN, I believe it was, or no, I guess Sports Center, part of ESPN, uh, put out the tweet like, oh, the Mavericks have, look at their last 15 games or whatever, and oh, they're 14th in the West. Oh, the Knicks have that first round pick. Oh, could you imagine what they're going to get? That KP pick's going to turn into something good. It's going to be a lottery pick. Now, to be fair, the Mavericks are still sitting in the eight seed in the Western Conference, so work is not yet done. However, they have climbed into the playoff picture, and they are still right there in striking distance of several teams. They're a half game behind San Antonio. Actually, you know what? It's percentage points again behind San Antonio because the Spurs just lost, so they're percentage points behind San Antonio, uh, and again, a chance to really seize momentum. there. They, they won the season series, I believe, with San Antonio already. And that's a rarity. I believe they have already closed that out for the year. Um, that hardly ever happens, even through the golden years of Dirk. We almost never swept San Antonio. Not swept, but almost never won the season series against the Spurs because they were always great in their own right. But uh, you got the Blazers coming up. The Blazers are down to the sixth seed. 
The Nuggets, despite losing to us the other night, are the five seed. The Clippers, this is going to be an interesting test here coming up because the Clippers have lost, I want to say, four or five. And yet, I'm haunted by the memory of that 51-point absolute pantsing at the Staples Center earlier this year. In the first, in the five and four start Dallas had, that was one of the big, big wins where you're like, hot damn, this team can kick the snot out of anybody. And I think LA very much remembers that loss and will be going out of their way to try and repay the favor. Now, whether or not they beat us by 51 points, God, I hope not. But whether or not they come out and just punch us repeatedly in the face until they basically test whether or not we actually have that fight and heart, we'll see. It wouldn't surprise me. We've seen times this year, and granted that was during the COVID recovery, where this team just did not look like it wanted any part of fight in that day. If someone punched them in the nose, they're like, ah, quit it. No, don't, don't punch me again. There's the basket. Just do what you got to do. Ah, am I bleeding? No, but still, ah. The team has not been consistent in that regard. Now, again, much better lately. Recent weeks, much, much better. 11 out of 14 wins. And you could say they pretty much preeminently, preeminently? Prematurely? Whatever. Against OKC, they figuratively waved the white flag. They're like, hey, hey. We beat OKC once this year without Luka. Let's see if we can do it without Luka and KP now. By the way, we're not going to play Hinton. Uh, we're not going to play Green. We're not going to play a lot of these rookies. Why pff, Why would we do that? Just because we're like not really out here trying to win the game as best we can. Why would we, why would we bother developing and getting valuable minutes for some of our young players who need to groom in game action? Pff, stupid. Just stupid what she said. Anyway, the Mavericks, they take that L, but overall it's been a very positive trend for the team over the past couple weeks. And now we're trying to see, can they pull back? A game and a half back of the five seed. Uh, what? Three and a half, though, of the four seed. So the four seed's kind of out there. That's the Clippers right now. But uh, the West is interesting because the Jazz are sitting atop at 28 and 10. The Suns are right behind them. The Phoenix Suns finally are going to make not only not only make the playoffs, but they're going to do it as a home court advantage team. I kind of had a feeling that that was, I mean, I could see them as like the three or four. I think this has turned into an unusual year. I'm not about to cry a pissing river for the Lakers because Anthony Davis has been out and suddenly they look very mortal. I mean, that that would be silly. But at the same time, it has flipped the equation where the West doesn't quite look like what the West should. Of course, I would argue in a normal year where we don't have a pandemic, the Mavericks would look a lot better than they have because we wouldn't have had that 18 games of agony that pretty much humbled the shit out of every single one of us and made us think like, hmm, maybe this team's not so good. But now we're seeing what they can be. Now the problem is we dug ourselves a hole and thankfully rather than l turn around and lie down in that hole, they appear ready to dig themselves out. Can I stretch this analogy any thinner? I don't know, but we'll find out. No, I think that's it. So the Mavericks digging themselves out of this hole. Hopefully they can get a... I, I don't just, I'm not just looking at playoffs. F just making the playoffs. I want this team to push to the sixth seed. I think that's incredibly obtainable. Again, you're a game and a half back of Portland. Your schedule has you facing off with Portland... Friday and Sunday. You got back-to-back -back with the Clippers. Well, it's not back-to-back -back days, but back-to-back -back games against the Clippers. That's key. Again, that's a team that's, uh, f what what I say, four and a half games ahead of you? That's key. And they're stumbling, so we'll see what happens if they really are still miffed about that whole 51-point pantsing on national television. Uh, then we got back-to-back -back with the Trailblazers. Then you got the T-Wolves who... <laughs> I mean, guys, they're the T-Wolves. Can we, can we just... Can, they're, they're the T-Wolves. Like, I, I don't want to... Especially with the Mavericks having a tendency to play up or down to their level of competition, I don't want to say, like, just pencil in a W, but, like, they're, they're the T-Wolves. Somebody clip this 
and you have my permission to throw it in my face if we lose that game. But I will pay for the consequences of my actions if and when necessary, and not a damn moment before. Then you got a tough game with the Pacers, Pelicans, Thunder. Yeah, I mean, the upcoming schedule, you've got a chance to make headway. So let's see. You dug the hole, now dig yourself out. The good news there, you still got quite a bit of time to do it, and the logjam in the West means you should be able to do it. But that's my time for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being patient with me as well as I try to manage pretty much two jobs, uh, prospects, new child. Not, I guess she's not new, new. It's not like if it's not like if it was sold on eBay. I wouldn't sell my child on eBay, just just to be clear. But like if I if I listed like a condition, you wouldn't say new. It'd be like. No, no, I, I can't take that joke further without opening a floodgate of innuendo and stuff that's just better left unsaid. So, yeah, nine months old here in just a few days. Keeps me busy, keeps me on my toes, and uh, it, it can make things a little difficult sometimes, but we're figuring it out. We're working around it, and uh, I'm putting together an ever-changing schedule, not my usual structure, not what I prefer, but at the same time, we're figuring out how to make it work. So, again, thank you for tuning in. Like the video, drop a comment, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and until next time, remember... Every legend was once a cop. From prospect to legend.